treating a prolonged weaning patient with Intellivent ASV. Hi, my name is Ode Garnero. I am a senior intensivist with strong interest in respiratory care and mechanical ventilation. I work in a 16-bed adult general ICU that has additional 8 beds for intermediate care. The ICU receives around 1,100 patients per year. About 750 require mechanical ventilation. The ICU is a part of a 1,200-bed public hospital in Toulon, a city in South France. The hospital provides medical care for 800,000 inhabitants. In our ICU, use of Intellivent ASV started in 2010. So far, approximately 4,000 patients have been ventilated with this new mode. Today, Intellivent ASV is our primary mode and is used in 99.5% of the ventilated patients. There have been no safety issues associated. I am pleased to share my experience in use of Intellivent ASV mode to wean successfully a prolonged weaning patient. The background, the patient was a 57 years old man. He has medical history of sick sinus syndrome with an implanted defibrillator since 2014. He developed acute respiratory failure and was admitted to our emergency department. The first clinical assessment showed that the patient had hypoxemia and tachypnea. His SpO2 was 55% and respiratory rate was 24. The X-ray showed bilateral lung opacities. The diagnosis was pneumonia with hypoxemic respiratory failure. The patient received oxygen at 15 liter per minute via a non-rebreathing mask. The SpO2 rose to 70%. Arterial blood gases showed pH 7.42. PCO2 37 mm mercury, PO2 44 mm mercury, lactates 1.2 millimol per liter. He was quickly intubated and mechanically ventilated in ASV mode with a Hamilton C1 ventilator. Then he was transferred to our ICU. The treatment underwent three phases. Phase 1 lasted one day, initial treatment. Phase 2 lasted 23 days, ECMO therapy. Phase 3 lasted 31 days, weaning process. Initial treatment, the influenza AH1N1 virus was detected. The treatment was oseltamivir and ceftriaxone. The initial treatment was focused on correction of hypoxemia caused by severe ARDS. The major measures include, mechanical ventilation in Intellivent ASV mode, Hamilton S1 ventilator, with ARDS condition. I will explain later. Sedation with midazolam, sufentanil, and neuromuscular blocker agent. The PEEP was set at 16 cm of water according to the measured esophageal pressure and transpulmonary pressure analysis. The result in tidal volume was 5.9 ml per kilogram of predicted body weight, PBW, and the plateau pressure was 23 cm of water. However, hypoxemia persisted. The PF ratio was 79 with 100% of FiO2. The patient was turned to prone position for 16 hours. His PF ratio was 102 with 80% FiO2. The initial treatment lasted for one day. It was clear that the above measures were inadequate, due to severe lung injury. ECMO therapy, the patient was put on venovenous ECMO and transferred to an ECMO center. His ECMO treatment lasted for 23 days. Throughout the period, the patient was sedated and mechanically ventilated with small tidal volume. Steroids were administered to treat post-ARDS pulmonary fibrosis according to METARI protocol. Neuromuscular blocker agents were used for 29 days and stopped after significant oxygenation improvement. After withdrawal of the sedation, his spontaneous breathing resumed. The patient was ventilated in spont mode. A percutaneous tracheostomy was performed. Then he was returned to our ICU for weaning. Weaning program, acquired neuromuscular dysfunction is a syndrome that is characterized by generalized weakness and difficulty to wean from mechanical ventilation. We applied a special weaning program for this patient who was ventilated for over five weeks. Intellivent ASV mode was used throughout the entire weaning process. Intellivent ASV, here, I would describe briefly the Intellivent ASV. 
More information is provided in the e-learning modules for IntelliVent ASV. As an advanced mode, IntelliVent ASV enables the ventilator to automatically adjust the ventilator settings for ventilation and oxygenation based on monitoring inputs of PETCO2 or patient's breathing rate, and SpO2. Quick Wean IntelliVent ASV provides Quick Wean, an automatic weaning protocol to assess the patient's readiness for extubation. After quick wean is activated, the ventilator tries to progressively decrease the support to 70% in percent minute volume, if clinically acceptable. The quick wean window shows how the six monitoring parameters change, indicating the patient's response to the reduced ventilator support. If all parameters stay in the acceptable ranges for a defined length of time, weaning criteria fulfilled in our term, the patient is considered to be weanable. Quick wean has typically three phases. Screening, from the time when quick wean is enabled to the time when all parameters fall into the acceptable ranges, the timer starts counting. Observation, from the time when all parameters stay within the ranges to the time when the predefined time is reached, for instance, 30 minutes. Auto SBT, the SBT is optional. It refers to a quick and significant drop of ventilator support for a defined length of time. If the patient can tolerate the challenge, the patient may be ready to breathe on his own. Preparation On day one of weaning, the patient was ventilated in IntelliVent ASV with no patient condition selected. Neither quick wean nor auto SBT was enabled. For optimal synchronization, we adjusted the settings of pressure amp patient trigger sensitivity and expiratory trigger sensitivity, ETS. On day 2, the quick wean function was enabled. On day 4, the weaning criteria were fulfilled. Then auto SBT was activated. After the first successful SBT, the special weaning program began. Weaning program, the weaning program comprised an alternation between two sessions, connection to and disconnection from the ventilator. During the connection session, the patient was ventilated in IntelliVent ASV with quick wean, but not auto SBT. We initiated the disconnection only when all weaning criteria were fulfilled. During the disconnection session, the tracheostomy tube was kept. The patient received high flow oxygen therapy at 60 liter per minute. The FiO2 was set manually according to the measured SpO2. If the patient could no longer tolerate this connection, according to the clinical judgment, he was reconnected to the ventilator, the disconnection was over. The first disconnection session lasted 30 minutes only. Every day the patient was disconnected twice. We tried to prolong the disconnection session day by day. During the special weaning process, diuretics were administered to treat edema. On day 31, Complete discontinuation of mechanical ventilation was achieved. By then, the patient was ventilated for 66 days in total. The patient was transferred to the step-down unit after complete disconnection for 48 hours. His tracheostomy tube was removed 10 days later, due to swallowing disorder. The patient spent 9 weeks in a rehabilitation center because of his neuromuscular disorders acquired in ICU neuromuscular blocker agents, steroid, prolonged sedation. One year later patient has no muscular or lung sequelae. My conclusions. This case shows how we wean successfully a prolonged weaning patient who suffered initially from viral pneumonia with severe ARDS, and then neuromuscular dysfunction acquired from prolonged mechanical ventilation. We applied a special weaning program with IntelliVent ASV. I found IntelliVent ASV particularly useful for two reasons, automatic regulation of ventilator settings for ventilation and oxygenation, and the two designed weaning functions, quick wean and auto SBT. Quick wean function enables us to deploy a reduced ventilatory support and to tell if the patient is weanable with a message on the screen. Auto SBT fully automates spontaneous breathing trials according to the settings.